Hi again, Dr. Dan here. Today I thought we'd talk about ovarian tumors. I'm sure either you or someone you know at some point has been told that they had an ovarian cyst or an ovarian tumor. Again, the most important thing to remember, especially for young women or premenopausal women, the majority of these ovarian tumors are totally benign. They are non-cancerous. Most of the ovarian cancers that we see don't start until around the age of 60 or 70. So most young patients who find, are found to have a cyst or a tumor of the ovary generally have benign tumors, some of which have to be taken out in order to make the diagnosis, others of which are just followed with serial ultrasound. So uh, some people have ovarian tumors, don't know that they have it because they have absolutely no symptoms. In fact, with ovarian cancer, the majority of our patients have very subtle type of symptoms that don't typically alert them that anything bad is going on. A little bit of nonspecific abdominal distension and bloating, urinary frequency, and a lot of people will blow it off. In fact, a lot of primary care doctors will blow it off as well, saying that this is nothing and don't worry about it. Generally speaking, if you're postmenopausal and you're having those type of symptoms, we usually recommend at least having somebody do a pelvic exam and an ultrasound just to make sure your ovaries are okay. So back to the topic of ovarian tumors in a, as a general uh, in the general sense. Uh, they can be cystic, they can be solid, or they could be somewhere in between what we call complex. The management of them usually depends on what they look like and what your age is. For example, if you're a young girl and you have a purely cystic mass on the ovary, most of the time we're gonna follow it with a serial ultrasound to be sure it's not growing or changing. If, however, you're in your 60s and you have a complex mass, most likely we're gonna tell you it's probably a good idea to get it out of there, have the pathologist look at it, and then if you need any specific surgery at that time to take care of it once and for all. The diagnosis of ovarian cancer, again, can be very, very difficult to make because there aren't always particular tumor markers that are elevated. CA-125 is a tumor marker that's been around for many, many years. Unfortunately, it's not a very reliable marker. 40% of patients with early stage ovarian cancer can have a totally normal CA-125. And the contrary, patients that are premenopausal in their 30s or 40s that have an elevated CA-125, the majority of the time that CA-125 is fictitiously elevated and it doesn't mean you have cancer. So it's not the greatest of marker and we only try to use it in certain instances. For example, we try not to use CA-125 values in premenopausal patients because it oftentimes doesn't add much to what we already know of what's going on. If you have a complex mass and you're premenopausal and we think we're gonna take that mass out, adding the CA-125 oftentimes doesn't help clarify the situation whatsoever. On the other hand, if you're postmenopausal, the CA-125 can give us a little bit of an inkling of whether this mass may be more highly suspicious for cancer or not. If you are postmenopausal with a mass, again, the normal procedure is to remove the mass surgically. We recommend that you have a gynecologic oncologist involved if there's any suspicion of ovarian cancer. The reason is, is we know from long-term studies that patients that are managed with gynecologic oncologists do better, have better outcomes, and have improved overall survival than people that are managed by either surgeons or gynecologists who don't do this type of surgery all the time. Sometimes with ovarian cancer, there is quite a bit of surgery that needs to be done. Sometimes we have to remove parts of the small bowel, the colon, sometimes even things like the spleen or part of the stomach. So you really wanna have somebody in there doing your surgery that's done this for a long time, has a lot of experience on what to remove, what not to remove. So if you or your family member have a suspicion for ovarian cancer, we'd be more than happy to talk with you, meet with you, and help guide you through the process of diagnosis and treatment to make sure that you have the best possible outcome. Thank you.